one of the reasons I wanted to interview you is because you've you've been with me from the start. You've been you've watched as I wrote the book. You've been in the Facebook group. You've always been so supportive and sharing so generously with yourself and others about how the book has changed your life. So uh, let's start there. Tell me a little bit about how the book has helped you change your life um, and mm. all that good stuff. Yeah, thank you, Rhonda. That's so lovely. I mean, it's probably um, maybe six to eight months ago, I think that we connected. I was thinking about it the other day. We um, and I looked back on the messages and I'm pretty sure it was from one of the Abraham groups that someone must have mentioned something and then that's how I got led to the book and I ordered the um, ebook I think at the time because I, I just was so wanting to read this book. I was like, oh, this is the answer and, you know, somebody can help me with this, with this situation around law of attraction because I'd been sort of um, using you know, the techniques from Abraham Hicks probably would be probably only 18 months now that I've been introduced to Abraham. And um, their big, actually thick collection book um, just came to me through a friend. And I, I read it 11 times. I couldn't put it down. I just, I just couldn't stop. It was just, it was speaking to me every single time I read it. Which book is that? That's My the old... No, yeah. that's the ultimate collection of Abraham Hicks. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Which one? And you don't remember. It was just which book? It's a big, it's a, um, it's a big, thick sort of golden book that's okay. the collection of all four together. Yeah. Um, I think it's got the Vortex. It's got um, Ask and It's Given. And anyway, there's a few of them together. But um, I was drawn to that book on a friend's table and she said, oh, yeah, take, take it, whatever you like. And it was through those concepts and reading those things that I, I started to really think, well, if I can change any area in my life, I can change my body or shift my body and, and um, you know, shift my weight, I suppose. And then, you know, obviously just asking that question led me to delicious alignment. Mm. And it, it was such a breath of fresh air, Rhonda, because you – you, the book's so well written. I love how at the start of the book you put, you know, it's all about the teachings and the understandings of Abraham and all of those sorts of things in your story. And then you talk about, I mean, I, I don't know about other people, but I love a good story. And, you know, the testimonials were amazing and just. You mean seeing, the stories in the back? Yes, the, the stories back. about the ladies. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, if they can do it, then I absolutely can do it. And, you know, I just, it was, I suppose it was from that point forward, I just knew that um, I could change my situation around my weight and, and my body image and, and how I saw myself um, based on, your, on the teachings in the book. And um, I love it. I now have a physical book. One day, Rhonda, when I meet you in person, I'm going to get you to sign it for me. <laughs> Yes, yes. I know you're in Australia and I'm in yes. the US. So yeah, that, that would be wonderful. So um, I know that the last time we talked, you said that, you know, very, very much like me and very much like a lot of women, you started uh, dieting very young. Yes. Yeah. Grew up. So I mean, similar beliefs around, um, you know, food is the issue, you know, basically, if you eat what we would classify as bad foods you're going to put on weight if you don't exercise you're going to put on weight you know you're big boned Rachel you're never going to have a slender body um, you know all sorts of images from my family you know one of my sisters had a slender figure one was more curvy like me and you know so that always pointing out well you're never going to be like her um, and just, yeah, constantly, I mean, I, I think back to it and I think I probably started dieting from the age of 13. Yeah, me too, me too. Yeah. I, I just wrote about that yesterday, yeah. Yeah, and I was, I was actually thinking about it yesterday and I was hanging out with, I used to go on school holidays to my nana's house and my younger cousin would come with me and I remember us walking around the block at nana's place 
up the giant hills and we would always be talking about weight and what's the latest diet and I think at the time it was the banana and milk diet where you just ate bananas and drank milk like for <laughs> seven days it was uh, yeah, crazy. I don't remember that one. <laughs> it's just crazy stuff and we really never shifted any you know true release of weight it was it was always just such a struggle and um, there were times in my life that I look back now and think you know where I was on I suppose a high vibration um, you know where I was really happy with my weight I know you know my perfect proportions and what feels good for me um, and yeah so that's sort of where where it all started um, but you know I suppose the the biggest thing so far that I've got well there's probably two things that I got out got out of reading the book firstly about truly loving myself mm-hmm. for, for who I am and where I am right now mm-hmm. and and that can be challenging for us because when we look at weight relief from weight release from a perspective of lack we want to be the shape we want to be now mm-hmm. and so learning to love yourself where you are and enjoy that journey, mm-hmm. that was a really big shift for me. And it yeah. only happened by reading the book. Yeah, um, that's, that's I, you know, I love hearing that. What can I say? So, <laughs> but yeah, so what happened was when I started writing the book, as you probably know, because I wrote it in my story that I wanted ultimately the main goal was I wanted to release pounds. And so I'm going to talk to these Abraham. I want to do it. Abraham, you know, the way Abraham says. So I interviewed found women on Facebook that attributed their transformation to either the law of attraction, but mostly it's Abraham. And, Mm. but in interviewing them and in doing my research for the book and, and, uh, listening to you know hours and hours and hours of of Abraham videos about everything I could get my hands on that they that they say about the subject, I learned it's it's really wow this 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 is not about losing weight this is really about you know self love <laughs> yeah is really, and it, it applied to anything I mean somebody who's you know having a problem with drugs or this or that I mean anything at all or just no problems just life in general it's just such a a general concept but in in this book we apply it to to the subject because that's that's the subject that um you know that I that I'm so passionate about so that's why I wrote it so I I love hearing that because that that Mm. was that is the main message you know you know the second step is start a love affair with your body, but really it could be start a love affair with yourself. I mean. Mm. Oh, definitely. And I, I mean, I used um, lots of little games. I love playing games with myself and, and doing different little experiments. I think I mentioned to you last time I did the little, I was just get starting to get an understanding around the concepts and how this was going to work in my life. Tell us about and, the experiment and what you did, because I remember you sharing about it, and what yeah. you did and what was the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure where I um, got the inspiration from. It might have been a book I was reading at the time or something, but I thought I'm going to um, print down a picture of myself, one that I was probably only about two years ago actually, now that I think back to it, not a long time. Um, And it's a beautiful picture of me that a friend had taken. And so I printed that down four times. Um, And it's just probably the size of my palm. And and I put one um, in my bathroom, one on my chest of drawers, I've got one on the fridge, and I've got one in my car. And for 30 days, every time I saw that picture, it would trigger me to speak words of love to myself Mm -hmm. whatever whatever was inspired you know I just say to my say to the picture wow you look stunning today you're so beautiful and you know every room you walk into you light up and so fun to be with and you know gosh you're looking thinner today and just you know whatever came into my mind at the time I would you know speak to this picture I mean the vibration um, that that created and the shift in my mindset was just unbelievable in those 30 days. Mm-hmm. 
and I, I think I was sharing last time and, and when I um, posted on Facebook, I went to a client, see a client for a meeting. It was just before Christmas time and I was taking him out for lunch and I showed up to the restaurant a little bit early and um, the waitress went to, you know, seat me and then the lady to my right said to me, I'm sorry, but I just have to let you know, you look absolutely stunning. And I was like, whoa, like I'm sort of, you know, taken aback. But she just said, you look so beautiful. Those colours are gorgeous on you. And she was just, you know, she said, nobody takes the time to share, you know, positive things with people anymore. And she said, I'm just, I was just blown away when you walked in the door. I just had to say something. And I thought to myself, wow not even 30 days, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, giving myself real love mm-hmm. it, and that's now being tra- attracted back to me. And, yeah. you know, I was just, I was walking on a high when I left, uh, <laughs> you know, left that restaurant and, and I just thought to myself, wow, that's just, you know, the, the power of the law of attraction. Yeah. And, you know, if I can create, a stranger to um you know share that with me then then you can do anything you know mm-hmm. release weight keep it off forever <laughs> you know eat whatever we want and yeah so that was a really wonderful experience i recommend it for anyone who's starting out because you know i really truly believe you know at the start i was there was a lot of split energy around you know, do I maybe go on a special eating plan and and also use the tools? Um, You know, I wasn't really sure what to do. And I know you and I have talked about, you know, the path of least resistance and things like that. So that was for me, you know, the path of least resistance at the time. And I will never forget that experience. I still have the photos and I still speak loving words to myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So, what I remember you t- also told me about a story. Um, uh, Neville Goddard was it with his oh, mentor yes. Abdul? Because yes. it's regarding food and, and visualization. visualization. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Um, you can actually find that on YouTube. I'll actually share it with you on too. So if you want to yeah. share it with the group, you can. So um, I love Neville Goddard. I mean, he was just way before his time. Mm-hmm. And um, so he, he was actually sharing a um, testimony about he wanted to go back to his hometown Barbados and spend some time with his family. But it was in 1933 with the Great Depression and he had no money. And he had a mentor. This men, His mentor was called, called Abdul and or Abdullah and um he went and shared that with Abdullah and Abdullah said to him, you are in Barbados. And anyway, they went through the process and basically wanted him to fall asleep every night, seeing the wish fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So basically seeing himself in Barbados, enjoying time with his family, smelling the smells, you know, experiencing this experience as much as he could. Now that went on for probably four weeks nothing happened and then eventually got a letter from his brother and the story goes that you know he ended up in Barbados and he went first class on the ship and spent three months well I there. love that story I love that story but wasn't uh the story I was thinking about was um yeah the food one food one about yes. you you it's like how can you eat anything that you want to eat and yes. then and Abdul said well because I believe Yes, yes, I don't. Yeah, I want to. You, yeah. Yeah. So no. basically, um, Neville from Barbados, Neville brought him, you know, like his father's rum and some, um, you know, beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it was bourbon in those days. A couple of big pints of it back as a gift, and Neville would say, you know, oh, he really tested me a lot around a lot of beliefs because I'd go to his house and you know he'd have this big meal and he'd be eating you know loads of bread and he'd be washing it down with ale and then have a massive big bowl of ice cream at the end of it and he'd say how can you eat all that stuff and he said well Neville you know it'd poison you if you ate all this stuff because you've got quibbles and I think the word quibbles is probably what we would refer to as the wobbles 
<laughs> because basically Neville was a recovering vegetarian and he didn't believe that he could eat all that food and remain, you know, a, a good weight. But Abdul said, well, I can eat, basically I can eat anything I like because I believe that everything's made from God and it's blessed to my body. Okay, yeah. Basically yeah. Is, is what he was saying. And it was just, you know, it was just interesting that even, you know, even back then, they knew that the law, he knew that the law applied to, to anything in his life. And, um, yeah, it's a very interesting story. And yeah. that's all part of the same little audio. So I'll send that to oh, you because oh. at the end, that oh. little food story is, yeah. at, is at Thank the end of the audio. So what I wanted to uh, say about that is a lot of times I find that people in the group or, you know, people that I'm working with, those they'll get hung up on that. Well, I, you know, why can't I, I tried eating anything I want and, you know, I gained weight or it didn't work for me. And I, it's not that um, we're saying, or Abraham saying, you know, go, you know, you should be able to eat whatever you want, however much you want and, and be your, you know, be, no, it's like work. What are your beliefs? And, work with your beliefs work that's why it's so important to do what feels good for you yes. i mean yes. just, like i hear that story and i'm like yeah well i have some of those beliefs that if i if i eat all massive you know amount of food i'm going to gain weight if i eat i have like certain beliefs that you know if i eat don't eat after seven i mean i'm not really interested in changing that belief right now because mm. right now it's my it's working for me. It's my path of least resistance. When I think about changing that belief, I, I feel tense. I feel yucky. I don't, you know, it doesn't bring me peace or, you know, this mm. works for me. It's right now. Not to say like one day down the road, I won't evolve more because we're, we keep evolving and have, I won't have that belief anymore. So it's like, whatever is working for you so how did how do you um handle the food then do you follow a food program or do you do intuitive eating now has your the way you eat changed like what feels good to you what works for you yeah in the past i've done um you know all sorts of things probably like everybody else um but i'm i'm really at a place where I am shifting that uh, the, the belief around the food in, in a really major way. I'm feeling really good about eating whatever I like because what I'm doing is every time I eat, I'm aligning with what I'm eating beforehand. So I've now changed my belief around food is just energy. My body is energy mm -hmm. and everything I eat and drink is blessed to my body. And so as I see that food go in, I'm seeing that food going out and that my body knows exactly how to process everything I choose to eat. Mm -hmm. So these types of beliefs I've been working on now probably, you know, I don't know, maybe six weeks and it feels so mm -hmm. good, you know. I mean, and, and I'm not, I suppose I did, when I started to change that belief, I'd done, I did the little experiment that Pam Grout talked about, her little Jenny Craig experiment, where she says, just bless your food, just test it, <laughs> test the universe. So for three days, so you, you weigh yourself and then for three days, every time you go to eat or drink anything, you just bless it bless it to your body mm -hmm. and um, I think we were talking last time at being brought up in Catholic homes that was you know it's sort of a bit of a thing that you know we used to bless the food in the table but why did they do that well maybe they did it for that reason they were taught mm -hmm. you know to bless mm -hmm. it to your body so um, I did that for three days and I, I, I think I shifted half a kilo <laughs> like you know and I didn't do anything different I just I ate everything I would normally eat. I wasn't thinking about necessarily healthy foods or not healthy foods. I, you know, had ice cream, I drank wine. I just, I just was going about my normal day and not really focusing on the food, just eating when I was hungry. And then when I was, I would just sit down and I would bless the food and I would bless my body. And it, it only take 30 seconds to a minute, Rhonda, but mm -hmm. you can just feel your vibration change. 
Yeah. And, you know, I think when you are aligned with what you're eating and you feel good about it, then it's not going to affect you because, you know, I'm starting to see and believe that it's not about the food. The, the food only makes us fat because we think the food makes us fat. Right. So when you change your belief that it's actually not about the food, it's about how we feel about the food, mm -hmm. oh, that is like biggest aha moment. And it just, for me at the moment, that's where I'm sitting. So I'm really loving that process of just enjoying everything, you know, sitting down at the table and eating a meal with my children that I cooked for them and not going, well, I can't have this bit and I can't have that bit or, you know, I'm sitting down, mm -hmm. I'm eating everything with them and, and enjoying it. And, yeah. you know, that my body knows exactly what to do. It will take the nutrients and the vitamins out of everything I eat and it's going to strengthen me, it's going to release weight, it's going to build muscle, it, you know, it's all about our beliefs, isn't it, really? Yeah. So even if you have, you know, a piece of cake or like you said, ice cream, like if you feel like having it and, and that's different from, you know, prior to learning about, you know, Abraham and, 100%. and the book and everything, because yeah. before it, 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 I could, I would guess that it's about, it was about deprivation, right? I can't 100%. Trying to control. I, that was the little video I, I, I posted today it was about um you know a abraham says it's it's not about altering behavior right it's about it's about altering your vibration and your thoughts yeah. And, yeah and and they say elsewhere that you know the most important thing is your vibration because it's mm. really determines how you metabolize the food and what how you get your nutrients as well. So if you could eat the healthiest meal and you're in, if you're in a really low vibration, like a really bad mood, but you eat this, you think you're eating, you know, all these vegetables and amazing organic and, but you're like in a really low vibration, your body is not going to benefit from that like you think it would but it, and, and if you're in a really high vibration and you eat you know a cupcake you're actually um gonna do well with that because it's the vibration that matters the most but you know science today's science and today's nutritionists and nutritionists and dietitians you know they probably wouldn't agree with any of this because they're not. No. They're not. <laughs> no. Isn't it wonderful, Rhonda? I love being outside the box. <laughs> right, right. Because, you know, science is not, not with, uh, you know, vibration yet. It's not understanding the power yes. of our thoughts as, as yet. They will eventually, you know, catch up and, and the two will, be as one, but right now, uh, you know, yeah, we we are on the leading edge with this to know and imagine that we're on the leading edge with this, knowing that it's our vibration is actually more important. Now, it's not to say don't eat healthy. I mean, I love to eat healthy, you know, and I also love to have, if I want to have something, I want to have it with you know, without a side of guilt. Like I want, I'm, I celebrate food now. Yes. Like yes. I didn't celebrate it before because I was embarrassed, you yes. know, about, oh, well, obviously she must love to eat, you know, cause she's, you know, so I'm not going to say anything like, but now it's like, man, I really enjoy my food. Like I, cause I allow myself to get hungry now. I never yes. even myself get hungry before because yes. I have something about being afraid of being hungry, like, you know, so mm. it is a healthier relationship with food in my own mind. I'm experiencing such a, such a healthier relationship with food. Yeah. And me too. And I, you know, enjoying different tastes and flavors. And I think you talked about it too, Rhonda, um, it might've been in the Facebook group, but just giving yourself permission. So, you know, last night we'd eaten um, our dinner and everybody was, we watched a movie and kids are on school holidays at the moment. They go back next week. And I thought to myself, oh, I feel, really feel like one of those salted caramel ice creams. 
And so I said, well, you know what? I'm going to give myself permission to do it. I mean, it was just sort of going around in my mind. It's not like, you know, it's becoming quite um, subconscious now, you know, with the changing the beliefs. So I just got up, I grabbed that ice cream and every single bite I took, it was just so delicious. And I felt really good after. And you know what? I didn't think twice about it because I know that everything I eat and drink is blessed to my body and my body knows exactly how to process whatever I choose to eat. Now, some days, every day is going to be different to what we eat and whether we think the food's good or bad, it really has so much to do with your vibration. And, I mean, Mm -hmm. the book was instrumental in teaching me me that, Rhonda, and, um, you know, I, I... really if there's anyone out here who's watching this video that hasn't got the book I I just can't highly recommend it enough because it's almost like my bible at the moment I can go back to it I can reread a story get encouraged you know follow the steps it's you know and it's just that constant repetition um Mm -hmm. I just wanted to share one quick thing with you so when I first originally um was looking at the Abraham teachings, mm-hmm. had some financial um, challenges at the time. And so I was obviously using my understanding around, you know, the teachings of Abraham Hicks and the law of attraction to shift to shift that in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did. I just, and I think back to how that happened and really it was getting in, getting my vibration to a point where I believe that money would flow easily and effortlessly into my life really was as simple as that and as that started to change now it probably took me three months to get into a really good you know vibration and, and have a lovely frequency around knowing that things were always working out for me and yep, now money flows. I, I, you know, I spend freely. I always have more than enough opportunities and things are coming, you know, I don't even, it's so subconscious now that it's, it's just flowing. But I think about the time frame, Rhonda, it was such a short time frame, you know, three, three months to just soak my subconscious mind in the understanding that things are always working out for me that money always flows and I think about the same thing with my body it's about subconsciously changing those thoughts and beliefs and you know it can be around food it can be around how we look what you know the love for ourselves you know and it's yeah it's a wonderful journey and I'm so excited to be a part of it (laughs) thank you I, I love um I love talking to you about this stuff and I wanted to go back to something. Yeah. And obviously we use this on any, I mean, money, relationships, create whatever it is you want to create. So mm. when you, go, I want to go back to when you were talking about blessing your food, because okay. that word bless has a little bit of a trigger for me, you know, because of my, so I wouldn't use that. Why I say, thank my food. Yes. So what, what, what I, I am curious is what you do you say a blessing or do you, because I, this is come, keeps coming up and it's really on my radar, this whole thing, okay. thanking yeah. your food, blessing your food, that how powerful it is. And I just want to explore this more. So okay. what, what do you say? What do you have blessing? Do you, do you have, what do you say? Yeah. So, okay. Here's my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, that I'm it eating. So yummy. <laughs> I know. It's on my plate and it's got all this. I've just made it. And as I'm making my food, I'm just in my mind, I'm just basically saying those things. And yes, use words that don't um that raise your vibration. The word blessed does not trigger like it doesn't trigger me um in a way that um creates a negative feeling or emotion or makes me feel a bit uneasy. Um, you know, I, I'll, I would say things like, thank you for this amazing food. Wow, look at these beautiful colours and thank you for the people who, you know, produced it for the farmers. I mean, you could say anything around those sorts of things, but I try and keep it just really simple. I, I want it to be something that just comes so automatically and, you know, it's all about that, you know, cementing it into your subconscious. So I just 
as I'm preparing my food, I've just now gone into a habit where I say, thank you, thank you for this beautiful food. Thank you that my fridge is full. Thank you that my pantry has, you know, more than enough and I've always got access to things to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you that this food is blessed to my body. Um, you know, and then when I sit down to eat, if I'm on my own, you know, so I'm not making anyone else feel uncomfortable, <laughs> you know, I might just close my eyes and I will... I'm not looking at the food as food. I'm actually seeing it as energy mm. and I'm seeing my body as energy and I'm just sitting there and I'm, you know, I'm thinking to myself, wow, everything I'm just about to eat is, is you know, is blessed to my body. Everything is, um, you know, doing what it needs to do. I love that little affirmation around um you know, my body knows exactly how to process everything I choose to eat because mm. today I choose to eat, you know, some nachos. Tomorrow I might choose to eat some lamb chops and salad. So whenever I make the choice to eat what I want to eat, my mm. body knows exactly how to process it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I just, you're right, go with the words that make you feel good. Because that's what it's all about. It's always about feeling good. And um, I just got into a habit of it. So, um, you know, when I have my coffee, when I drink a glass of wine and I have some cheese and crackers, I'm just, you know, I'm just enjoying the process and I'm just saying, oh, wow, all this is just, you know, it's blessed to my body. Thank you that this is available to me. And I'm just wanting to put myself in alignment I'm wanting to raise my vibration and I want to be on the frequency that I can eat anything my heart desires because, you know, what does Abraham say? We can be, do and have whatever our heart desires. And it's supposed to be easy and fun. Absolutely. So, totally easy. Yeah. I'm not sitting there for hours, you know, doing all sorts of things. It, I want it to be easy, effortless and feel good. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You're right. So right. That's sort of my little routine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. So, yeah, and um, thanks so much for for doing this ag ag again. And um, you know, I'm so excited that you're going to be in the class, the Love Your Body Master Class. Uh, I'm so excited. I'm, how long have we got, Rhonda? It's not even a week. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yes. Oh, I know. It's going to be wonderful. I'm so excited. And, you know, like minded people. And, you know, I'm thinking about already when you're going to run the next one, I'm going to be oh. there as well. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, um, it's great because we have a smaller, you know, instead of like the big group is like 3,000 almost. And this, you know, we have like 20, 25, 30 people. So we really, get to know each other and support each other and yes a lot yeah. of diving yeah. deep into all of this yeah and you know it's lovely when you're I mean I'm just I'm feeling just so fabulous just sitting here talking to you and and as you know when you talk to other high vibe people you just you're on a, such a great vibration and it will create such a beautiful momentum and um yeah you know, I'm just so excited about what you know, the amazing things we're going to see in that time because, you know, this is really becoming something that's not taboo to even talk about, you know. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful. I'm so, so honoured to be a part of the group and, you know, I would love this message to be spread more through Australia because, you know, I see all these people out there, you know, trying so hard to be something that they truly want and not ever reaching where they want to be. And I know it can just be so different and, right. you know, I'm, yes. I'm going to be a testimony to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my inspiration is because I, I, I was one of those people. I mean, I, you know, for 20 years, I really, is it wasn't a lot of emotional pain about how and obsessed with my food and how I looked and, and uh, struggled with depression over, you know, um, body image. So I think that's why I'm so, you know, I, I'm so excited about this work because yes. I, want, I want to share it with other people who, you know, and, and everybody's experiencing it at different degrees. Not everyone was at the level of, 
obsession that I was with it, you know, everybody's at different levels, mm. but, but I find that the message still resonates with, even if you want, you, you know, you just are a little obsessed or you're like, or it's like consuming your life, you know, to the mm. point where it's, it's interfering with your life and your function, yeah. you know, yeah. so this, it really helps people all throughout that whole um, stream of, of where they are. So, yeah. so thank and you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. You're totally welcome. And um, yeah, can't wait to meet everybody in the group and yeah, it's going to be wonderful. I'm expecting incredible things. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Well, Thank you for your time. I'll let you get on with your day. <laughs> You're welcome. Hello, okay. everybody. Yes, see you on the group. Yep. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Rhonda. Okay. Thank you.